everyone. Welcome to our seventh ever virtual visit to Manor Farm. Because it's a bit grey and grisly outside today, I thought we'd start snuggled up on the sofa, spending some time with our friend Freddy. Freddy here is a bearded dragon. His head is a little bit paler than usual today because he's about to molt, which means he's going to shed his skin. Freddy has lots of very interesting things about him that even if you know a lot about lizards, you might not know. Some lizards can drop their tail. If they feel frightened the minute you pick them up, they might think you're a predator and they will just drop their tail straight off. But Freddy the Bearded Dragon doesn't do that. What he does is puff his body up and puff his beard out and hiss and go a dark black colour if he thinks you're a predator. Because he can't drop his tail and run away, he has to be a bit braver than that. Another amazing thing about Freddy is that on the top of his head, he actually has a third eye. You can't really see it, it's just in there and it's hidden under a see-through scale. It doesn't work quite as well as his other two eyes, but it can see shadows and it helps him if a predator like a bird was going to swoop down from above. It also helps him to navigate and find his way home. If you covered it up, he could get completely lost. If you happen to own a bearded dragon, you'll probably know what your dragon looks like when it's not very happy. But the little tip is, if you're stroking them like this, Freddy likes this, he's very, very used to being handled. If they close their eyes like a cat or a dog that would really be enjoying itself and that'd be a sign it was relaxed, it actually means they're feeling a bit stressed out and worried. So if you're ever stroking a lizard and it closes its eyes, it means it would probably rather go back and have a bit of time by itself. Now, a lizard like Freddy also is best living on its own. They're just solo kind of creatures and they tend to fight and argue a lot if they have Bavarian mates. Let's have a look at his house. This is Freddy's home. It's called a vivarium. He has hammocks for climbing on, a nice water bowl for bathing and drinking, a little cool cave in case he gets too warm. There's his funny crocodile skeleton friend. And at this end, he has his warm sun bowl for basking. Here he is enjoying a little bit of salad. He's also got a slate there for sharpening his claws. Another amazing thing about Freddy and lizards in general is that they don't have external ears like we have. They have a sort of a hole in the side of their head where their ear is. Now, I think my friend Freddy wants to go and have a bit of an explore around his house. He's getting a bit restless. So let's say goodbye. And before we head outside, have a go at one of my favorite games. This is a game that I'm sure you've played before. We call it Guess What I'm Drawing. You can play it at home with your family, or you could even Zoom or FaceTime your friends and play it with them that way. My top tip is to only draw a little bit at a time while the people are guessing. Here we go. It's a button. <laughs> it's not that. Have you got it yet? It's the dog. <coughs> Have a go at home. Hello everyone, Mabel here. Can't have Ellie introduce me because she's busy being my human sun lounger at the moment. What can I say? It's tough at the top. Anyway, I'm here with my marvellous Mabel's mystery animal again today. And this time I've got a corker for you. Here's clue number one. We do many interesting jobs from police work to life saving as a lifeguard and even tracking, we've got a very good sense of smell. 
clue number two. We are the oldest animal ever kept as a pet. People kept us as pets thousands and thousands of years ago. Number three. Three of us even used our famous swimming stroke, the paddle, to escape from the sinking of the Titanic. <gasps> That's it, guys. Good luck. Now I'm going to pass you over to Hannah for the great guinea pig naming ceremony. Bye. We had literally hundreds of people write in to suggest names for our lovely and unusual looking little baby guinea pig. It was really tough choosing a winner and we had several people suggest Captain Tom. That was our runner-up second favourite. It would be a really lovely tribute and quite appropriate because I think this little one's going to spend a lot of time walking up and down the garden. The reason we didn't go for it is because we can't quite tell yet whether it's a boy or a girl and we're not sure Captain Tom himself would be very pleased if we had to change it to Thomasina. So. Now we'll reveal the name we've chosen. There were a few entries with the same name, so we'll be getting in touch with all of you for addresses to send over a prize. Here we are. I'm going to put this little one on our very own version of Pride Rock. The name we've chosen is Rainbow. Some of the children who've been joining us during lockdown while their parents do important jobs have helped me write a guinea pig related short play. We've made the characters from our play using inspiration from the stick book. So let's go and have a look. Come on. Excuse the guinea pig noise. They're all a little bit excited because we've just put mummy and baby back with the other babies and their friend. But today, our stick book activity is going to be number 55, make shadow pictures. It really is extremely easy and doesn't take much explaining. So in the book, they use mostly sticks and leaves, which is the same as we are going to do. So you can just go outside and you can make some puppets and shadow picture creatures with just a stick. I think this looks like quite a good snake. Or you can make something a bit more complicated and fine leaves, make sure it's nothing poisonous or that's going to irritate your skin, and attach them to your sticks. You could use string, I've used sellotape it's super easy. And then you can even cut your leaves into different shapes. This sort of waxy leaf, this is from a laurel bush, um, be careful to wash your hands afterwards. These are brilliant because you can make really good shapes out of them. Here I've already done with a little bit of sellotape, an aeroplane, and a girl, and then you can literally just cut them like thick paper, really, like this. And because it's going to be shadows, you want to make sure you don't make your design too complicated. And remember that any holes are going to be light. So it's really good to make eyes and mouth and features like that by poking holes. Uh, I used another stick, actually, to poke the eye holes in mine. So if you find a sharp one, just give it a little prod. And then you can rip it a little bit with your fingernails as well. Here we have a little face. Then you just need to attach that to your stick with sellotape. So now that I've done this, we've put together a short show for you. Let's go over and see if you enjoy it. Here it is. Hello guys, this is a Mana Farm Lockdown Crew production of The Girls Who Guinea Pigs in There once was an extraordinary girl with guinea pigs who lived in her hair. She smelled terrible as the guinea pigs ate, slept and did their business there. She was quite miserable, especially when all alone at school. <laughs> oh, you stink. So she took a holiday to the rainforest of Venezuela to get away from it all. In the jungle, the snakes recoiled from her awful stench. So she forlornly sat by a river on a useful bench. Who should she meet but a marvellous beast which was bathing in the water? His name was Capybara. If you've never heard of this giant gentle guinea pig, you really ought to. 
Capybara smiled at the girl and stroked her tangled hair. The guinea pigs all crawled out. They decided to live with him right then and there. <laughs> so the girl said farewell to her newfound friend. The story is now heading to a happy end. The guinea pigs loved their giant new leader. They were pleased to be in his pack. So the girl flew home and went to school. She wasn't happy to be back. But with fresh new locks and no more pong, she made many new pals before very long. <laughs> the end. Here, Molly has heated a strip of steel in the forge oven behind her, and now she's hammering the red hot metal into the shape of a horseshoe. Next, she files it and smooths the edges. Here are some finished shoes. A farrier needs a lot of different shoes before they can go out and shoe a horse. Here, Molly is prepping and picking a horse's foot, ready to trim it and then apply a horseshoe. This horse looks very relaxed. I don't think all horses are this relaxed. Once Molly's shaped the horse's foot, she will nail the shoe on, but it doesn't hurt because it's a bit like our fingernails. They don't have feeling in that part of their foot. If you look closely, can you see the bits of old hoof flying off? Lastly, before she nails it on, Molly heats the shoe up one last time and burns it onto the foot to make sure it's a snug fit. This doesn't hurt the horse either, but look at all the steam coming off. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed our latest virtual visit to Farm Club. Before we say goodbye, I need to reveal marvellous Mabel's mystery animal. I expect most of you got it right this week. It was a dog. These great dogs belong to our friend Megan. She didn't quite manage to get them into our barn dance last week, so we thought we'd use them as our examples today. That's it. Hope to see you next week. And remember to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss our next visit. Bye, guys.